Hello everyone. In the previous video, we defined a couple of additional tests to the sign up route, and we came to the point where we were able to save a user successfully in the database. We also did additional setup for using the Mongo memory server in order to have the ability of testing the Mongo's functionality and our user models within the database or how, how it would interact with the database should the database be provided to our application. We still don't have this setup. We will worry about it later. But for now, in this video, what I want to talk to you about is about this little part here. So it does not allow saving a user with a duplicate email. And I'm not satisfied with the place where we put this validation because this validation is within the signup route but this should actually be a model validation, right? I mean, it doesn't matter if I create via the signup route or via some other route, say that in my social, in our social media application, we would later on allow a user to invite friends and this would create a user instance in our database or user object in our database. And this would not come from the signup route, this would come maybe from the invite route or something like this. So then we would have to duplicate this logic into the uh, other routes and this is not good practice right if we have duplicated logic we can probably extract it to a common common function the point here that i want to make is that this is not really a route responsibility it is not responsibility of the sign up route this is responsibility of the model so the model itself should not really allow for duplicated users or users with duplicated emails. So let's create a test now to the model. And it's going to be user.test.ts. I will start my test watcher. And it's going to fail because this test file is empty. as expected, so it should not save a user if the email is already in the database. So it should not save a new user, right? Not just a user, but a new user if the email is already in the database. So here I start by defining some user info that is going to be relevant for us. It's going to be the email, this can be any valid email. So validity of email and password, we are not very worried about here. Maybe we write, we write additional tests in the future, in the, uh, upcoming videos. But for the moment, I just want to have valid information. Invalid information in the signup route, I'm already testing. But again, this would be nice. I think that the email test could also come to the model level because email has to be valid. It doesn't matter where it comes from. And the password, it should be hashed of course um but think about it maybe it's a little bit more time consuming to write the tests for hashing the password but we will we'll dedicate time to it when when necessary we have the the you the sub the subtask for hashing the password so i think that there we would write the tests for this uh, password okay so here what i want to do is i want to await and this is an async function so i'll just mark this as async and here i want to await user.create and i need to import the user let's import from index and this is going to be with my user info and then this is fine this should pass it's not a problem it should save this user but what i want to happen is that when i call it again with the same user info and for that matter it's only the email that i care that is the same the password doesn't matter this should fail right i would expect an error here but i don't have an error here <laughs> so how do i test this well i think that we can start writing it here so user Let's, let's say new user, right? New user one, this would be await and the const new user two. That's interesting. The tests are hanging for some reason. I'm just gonna kill them and start them again.
Yeah. So the problem is that they are still passing. And here I'll just add a few, a few more uh, validation checks. So I expect new user one to be defined, and I also expect new user one dot email to equal the user info dot email. Right. These are the two things that I'm expecting from my test. And the problem is here. All right. So this will still pass. But what I want to do now is I want to make the test finally make the test fail. So here I need to have an error, right? I, I would like to have an error to be defined. And I want to try this whole thing within a try statement. And I would like to catch the error. And then I would assign this error to my previously defined error. And I would expect error to be defined right so this is going to fail because the, the error is not going to be defined here and now we are going to make this error be defined and of course there are a few so there are a few issues around async and maybe you prefer another structure other than this but this will work just fine for our purposes here, if this is not scalable or if we notice that this has some limitations in further tests that we write, then we'll change the structure. But for now, this makes it very clear. I'm trying to create a new user. I'm catching the error. The error is being assigned to this variable and I expect this variable to be defined. So for us to handle Mongoose hooks, right? I want to execute something before the user is saved in the database. So the way that I define this in Mongoose is I call the pre method and then I pass a stage before which I want to run this function, right? So I want to run this before I save the user in the database and it's going to be a, an async function because I need to retrieve my user based on whatever I receive here. And what I what I want to call your attention to is to this very important keyword. And this is why we are using the function, normal function, not an arrow function here. Is because Mongoose passes the document or the current document to the keyword this. And if I use the arrow function, I lose the context of this and I don't have access to the user document. So here, I want to just make another comment. Yeah. <laughs> so now you see that I have this next function and this next function or done, whatever you name it, it should be called whenever, if everything goes well, if something goes wrong, I should throw an error. I, it's fine to throw an error and then um, simply this, this uh, function is not going to be called and mongoose is going to handle the error for us so i still have a problem right my test is still passing because i'm not doing any validation here i'm not throwing any error so the way that i will do my validation is i will await for user dot find one by email being this dot email and now if my existing user is defined then i want to throw a new Adder with email is already in the database. And this should be enough for us to make our test pass. Let's see what's going to happen. Exactly. Now the test is passing. So now I cannot create a user at the model level, right? I can still go a little bit more in, in details here and let's maybe expect the error to be defined and I would expect my error dot message to equal this message that I am writing here, right? This message that I'm writing here. Let's see if this is going to pass. I think it will pass because I'm just throwing the error and then it should be exactly. So it's correctly parsed and it's correctly handled by Mongoose. And as you can see, the other tests are also passing. So I have no, I, I didn't break anything else by adding this validation here. This of course is not going to be the final uh, shape of our 
of our error validation. I think in the next video we'll come back and we will do a little bit of refactoring because this is a very basic error. Maybe I want to to write a specific error for a model, so model validation error or something that I can then throw here, and this is going to have an additional or this is going to have additional information for us. So my tests are passing here, and now what I want to do is I also want to, as you can see in my sign up test, right? I have, I'm not allowing to save a user with duplicate email, but what would happen, what would happen if I simply removed something like this? Then my tests in the sign up, they would pass, they would fail, sorry. Because I don't think that this is going to be exactly. So I am having a problem here that I am simply throwing an error and now everything is breaking just because I removed that validation and this is very easy to address so all I have to do is to try and catch the error and here I will if this is successful then I return a send uh, status of 201 and I send the email with the new user email if I enter the catch block then I will just return rest.send status of 422 and this should be enough to make our tests pass. Exactly. So now you see that I have no validation whatsoever on the sign up and that's fine because the validation is at an even more basic at an even deeper level that is at the user model level. Good. I like this structure much more i'm still not satisfied with the error here we will go back to this but now at least i have a clear idea that the user validation or that the model validation is independent of the sign up route and is done at the model level good then i think that's it for this video and in the next video, we will come back and we will talk a little bit about better, better error handling. Thank you very much and see you in the next video. Bye bye.